St. Moritz, Switzerland is a tradition-rich, glistening jewel in the Swiss Alps. It is known the world over for its breathtaking beauty and high society flair. Of the many athletic venues in St. Moritz, the most legendary is the bobsled track, the first one anywhere in the world and still in use today. The bobsled uh, track was built in 1904 and the St. Moritz Bobsled Club was already founded in 1897. So that means uh, a lot of tradition we have here on the track and especially the English people came in in the winter time for make bobsleighing and that's why the Bob Club was uh, founded first before we had the Bob Track. No doubt the most unique aspect of this venue here in St. Moritz, Switzerland is that it's the only man-made track anywhere in the entire world. Foregoing the coffin ride, we still had to jump in an actual bobsled and give this track a try. So we're all decked out, ready to go. About 90 miles per hour and 5 G's await on the track here in San Moritz. key turn on the course, known as the horseshoe, where the sleds and the riders hit some 90 miles per hour. That was unbelievable. I mean, really. So they come for the sports. They come for the glamour. They come for the social scene. But maybe more than anything else, they come to St. Moritz for the chocolate. How did Switzerland become known for its chocolate? Oh, um, that was all about the um, chocolate uh, makers from the Engadin. Mm -hmm. And they transferred to Germany, but didn't got really successful there. Mm -hmm. And they tried and tried and tried, and then it came back to Switzerland. And I reckon it's just a good chocolate, or how they produce the chocolate. I don't want to compare anything with Belgium or sure. other countries, but we do We're just, just say we it. yours a, is better. Ours is the best. <laughs> compared very much to Vail. It's wide open, some of the most beautiful scenery you'll see. The biggest draw is the Jungfrau, the Jungfrau region, the Eiger. Nature, the beauty, the mountains, I mean, it's clear. Underneath those mountains is a one-of-a-kind ice palace carved out of the glacier itself. That was the first ice palace I'd ever been to and I must admit I was very impressed and I still am because it improves or they make changes to it every year and it's just, I think it's very special. To get to the ice palace you have to walk through what is essentially an ice tunnel. Ice, wall to wall, ceiling, floor, it's basically just a tunnel of sheer ice leading to the palace itself. What do you think is the single most impressive thing about the ice palace? I just think that the time and the attention to detail that's gone into creating such a masterpiece. Though skiing is, of course, St. Anton's sport of choice, visitors looking to try a more extreme activity won't be disappointed. Paragliding offers an unparalleled view of this skiing paradise. Now we go to start here on Kapal. We have perfect conditions, about 10k Ostwind.
A day on St. Anton slopes is enough to exhaust anyone, but it's when the skiing ends that the party begins. No place does apre ski quite like Austria, and no place within Austria lights it up quite like St. Anton. Famous for the drinks, the food, the drinks, the music, and the drinks. We have so many sportsmen here, really, really good skiers, and of course, after, after skiing, they want to sit together and have fun together, and we have a really big uh, upper ski and, and a wonderful nightlife, so you can come to St. Anton for this too. A lot of places in Europe have an active nightlife, but here in St. Anton, active is an understatement. The party merely begins at night, but doesn't hit full gas until the early morning hours. There's no closing hour in Austria. So why is there no closing hour? Typically places will at least close by 2 or 3 a.m. and that's considered late. There's no law. Really? So they just round the clock like a 7-Eleven. Yeah, <laughs> it is. This is the beautiful medieval village of Garmisch-Partenkirchen. A day of sightseeing or hitting the slopes will make anyone thirsty, but don't let the quaint feel of this village fool you. There's no shortage of places to wet your whistle, and among the most popular watering holes, peaches. Now, when it comes to the nightlife here, we all know that the Germans can party. But the level of activity is actually dictated here in Garmisch Partenkirchen by a rather robust American presence. There are soldiers who come back from the Iraq. They make here a kind of recreation and they stay here for vacation and um, to have a good time after Iraq. They like to go out, they like to, to party, and because we have the dollar night, that's um, a good time for them. Besides consuming their share of spirits, Garmisch Partenkirchen locals also know a thing or two about crafting the beverages, with the area playing host to dozens of breweries. You find so many small breweries around here. Um, on some traditional days we have brewery hopping where you go for a walk from one d brewery to the next. You can't visit a brewery without taking a tour, right? We have a, a lot of tanks and for example the Helles or the dark beer needs to stay four till six weeks about at zero degrees for lagering and for yes, getting good tasty. So th here we have some uh, cooling directly at the tanks so it's always about below 10 degrees and at the tanks we have something about zero degrees and depending on kind of beer it takes till two months. And then you, we will put the yeast inside. And may, so for example here, this is, will be the wheat beer. So it's a obergeric, so it's called obergeric. So the yeast during fermenting is going up. At the other two, there's a, now is a dark beer inside. It's a untergeric and during the fermenting, the yeast going down. You must know the first skier in the Alps is from Sasfe, 1864. Recreational activities on the snow here are not just about skiing, as there are other good options the locals love that also have a connection to the past. Now we're about to go sledging in Sasfe. A few hundred years ago, when this activity was first created, it was less a sport and more a means of transportation for villagers to get from one town to the next. These days, it's just another way to have fun up on the mountain. Left foot goes left. Right. Yeah, right foot, right, left foot, left. Left foot points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 
Just minor mishap. Overcooked a turn. But now we're back to it. We would just call this sledding, but, you know, when in Rome. For the younger crowd, Swiss souvenirs may not be your thing, but the Sausfe Apre scene most certainly is. Here we have the Mistral, we have Termude in here, and you walk on. Yeah, it's, uh, we're doing good. I, I started this for about 20 years, and then it was very small. It was a small hut, you know, and now it grows up to... All the people and the strange characters, and the fact that I can't go to the local shop and not see somebody that I know. So it's, it's a really nice community here. Yeah. Sasfe also has a quirky yet compelling restaurant scene that certainly features some surprises. This house is the oldest one in the Saastal, so in this um, area. And uh, it was privately owned until three and a half years ago. It was built between 1904 and 1906. You can sleep here and uh, you can't do it in a lot of houses like this. Very interesting are the lamps we have downstairs and the chairs. They are from a, an artist from Zermatt, from Heinz Julen. People from this area, they want to be their own chef. Zermatt with snow is the best resort in the world. You can free ride, you can do freestyle in parks, you can just do slope style, slalom, giant slalom, pretty much anything. We're surrounded by two-thirds of all the 4,000 meter high peaks in Switzerland, which is quite a lot and that makes it a very nice view. Further down the slopes in Zermatt, you can find a special igloo, but in typical Zermatt fashion, it's more than just a pile of snow. So over the cheese fondue lunch, we're talking with Rito, who basically runs the place here on the side of the mountain in Zermatt. Rito, how did you come up with the idea, first of all, to build this igloo on the mountain in the middle of all these runs? Um, first, it was not my idea to build the igloo up here. It was uh, 13 years ago, a ski instructor who wanted to sleep up on the mountain in another part in Switzerland. And he wanted to sleep on the mountain because he wanted to be the first on the slope in the morning. He did, not, he did not find a place to stay overnight, so he built his own igloo, which was really like this, small. And then his friends came up and said, oh, let's stay up there, let's have a party in your igloo. And that's how he started with the idea of sleeping in an igloo on the mountain. What are some of the most unique features about the igloo? We have some really special things up here. We have, uh, during the night, uh, people can, um, can sleep in a suite which has uh, three different rooms. And in one of the rooms, there is uh, even a jacuzzi, where they can stay in a jacuzzi and have a look to the Matterhorn out of the igloo. It's not looking big, but there are always hidden places where you can sit. Then after dinner ends, the famous Zermatt nightlife begins. Where else but at the Hotel Post? The Hotel Post, we are like the center of nightlife in Zermatt, that's for sure with our five bars and clubs. The brown trip is on the bars, you know, we used to get up on the bar and dance as well, you know, you'd get girls taking their clothes off. The Schneewittchen has theme parties all the time, you know, you've got like a Coyote Ugly Night, leather and latex parties, you know, so they're really, you know, the parties get pushed here as well. Drinks start flowing and a few few games start happening and then all of a sudden everybody's friends and everybody gets on it, you know, and the, that's what I love about Zermatt as well, because everybody's here to have a good time. Doesn't get any better than this. Really? Look at that. Yeah.